Ever feel like you're doing this teaching thing alone? You don't have to be. Share Teaching is all about sharing the workload through the power of collaboration and teamwork. Together, we'll walk through all the difficult parts of teaching and learn how to streamline our processes, fine tune our time management, and develop a more manageable workload. If that sounds like a dream come true to you, then welcome to the Shared Teaching Podcast. Let's share in the teaching to make those dreams a reality. Now here's today's Shared Teaching. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Shared Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Susan, the creator behind Shared Teaching, and I'm so thankful you are here listening with me today, where we are going to talk about episode number 83 We're going beyond book clubs and we're finding activities for our higher learners, in particular in elementary school. Now, my background is mostly in kindergarten through third grade, so a lot of my content is geared towards that. If you are an upper elementary teacher listening, that's okay too. Some of these you can still apply to your own students, but maybe just add a little bit more rigor to them. So today's episode is actually coming from a listener. Lisa, if you're listening, thank you so much for reaching out to me on Instagram and giving me this idea. And Lisa gave me the question of what she can have her high students working on independently while she is working with her students in intervention in small groups. Now, she admitted to having a little bit of a struggle with doing traditional book clubs and readers' theaters. She said they just don't work out in her classroom. So rather than go in depth to the reasons why that might not be working, because I did not have that long of a conversation with her, I did want to offer five alternatives that she could use in her classroom that anyone can use in their classroom if they're really just not feeling the book club vibe. So the first activity I want to suggest is for students to design a book club cover. Now students would first choose to read a book at their independent level and when they finish the book they're going to create a new book cover for the book that tells other readers about what they read. So they might be picking out their favorite part of the book or they might pull out some of their favorite characters What do they think they might look like if there's no pictures in the book? And they would create a whole new cover inspired by what they read and how they interpreted the author's words. I might offer a set criteria or a rubric for students, depending on how you might grade this activity when they're finished. The rubric could also just be there to kind of keep your students on track with your expectations for the completed project. So for example, you might tell them how many colors they have to use for the cover, that it has to have the book title and the author, that they have to have picked one part from the book to retell as a story cover. So you kind of get the idea. That's what the book rubric would look like. And then they would get to display their newly created book cover in the class library and maybe even have them present their cover two other students in the class to kind of entice them to want to read the book as well. Even if they're lower readers, we want to be always pushing to that high and getting them excited as well and believing, yes, they can read that book at some point. They just might need a little bit more practice than the student that created the cover, but they can do it with your help and assistance, right? Anything is possible. If they want to do it, they can do it. Okay, number two is write a reader's theater. And after they've read, again, a chosen book, you're gonna ask students to rewrite their favorite part of the book, but as a play. Now this activity might be a little bit trickier, so you need to make sure your students are already familiar with reader theater scripts. So Lisa, if you've already had your students practice reading the reader's theater scripts, you will now give them a script outline that can improve the chance of the students correctly completing the assignment. You want to make sure that you go over this a few times before you release them independently, and that's going to bump up their chance of success. 
I would also recommend this as a partner activity, not as an independent activity. Just because, if, especially if first and second grade, they're going to need the support of their peers to kind of brainstorm ideas, figure out the sentences, maybe even the spelling, and two people will be able to write it easier than just one person alone. Now, when students are finished, of course, you want to ask them to present their short play to the class, because what else is the point of creating it but for an audience? Some students might even like training their friends to take the roles of rehearsing and performing their reader's theater as they take on more of a director's role. So that can be a really fun twist on the traditional reader's theater. The third idea I have is to choose a passion project. Now to keep students engaged and independent while I'm teaching small groups or while you're teaching small groups, we need to make sure they're working on something that interests them. So this is where asking students to choose a passion project comes in. Passion projects are often interchangeably called genius hour or maker spaces, so you might have heard them called that as well. And from what I can tell, they're all generally the same thing. Those people that are in the makerspace world or the genius hour world, please don't come and give me some nasty mail. <laughs> but from a quick glance of the research I did, it seems that some people do use those words across terms and that they are all basically meaning that you want students to find something they're excited about that they're going to learn more about on their own. So whatever we call them, that's what we want our students doing. So in the primary classroom, a passion project can be as simple as students looking up or researching the answer to a question they have. So you would, of course, provide them with appropriate websites that they can go on to, or maybe even a stack of books, show them where in the school library they can find books on their topic, and then they can take those back to the classroom and research their question there. Susan Morrow of Keep Em Thinking goes into more details with her blog post, Passion Projects in Elementary School. And of course, I'll have that linked for you in the show notes. So if you are listening to this on Apple Podcast, it is already hyperlinked in the show notes. So when you're not driving or doing something that might cause accidents, you can go ahead and scroll through the show notes on your phone and just click the link and it will take you right to her blog post. Or you can go to the show notes for this episode on my website, and everything's linked there as well. Okay, the second to last activity I have is a reading genres contest. So when you allow students to independently pick their books, they often stick to just one type of genre. Have you ever noticed that? So we also do that as adults. Let's say I'm a big fan of trashy romance. I'm going to keep reading trashy romance all summer as many as I can get my hands on. I'm not going to pull like some history book about Egypt off the shelves and intersperse that among my romance binge. <laughs> so students are the same way. I don't know why we expect them different. But when they're learning to read, it's really important that we introduce them to many different genres because they might find one that they didn't know they loved, and now they're going to love it. So a way to do this is to provide a tracking sheet and turn it into a contest that can help them try out different genres. Now, depending on how much accountability I want or you want, if you decide to do this, you might want to design a simple recording sheet. So I'm just thinking a blank sheet of paper. Maybe I'm going to open it up in PowerPoint and create a quick table that just says title of book genre. <laughs> Simple as can be. They're just going to copy the title of their book. They're going to write what genre it is. And maybe you even have a little quick check cheat sheet that students can follow along and use. I do have one available in my 24 genre posters resource on TPT, and it's also included in the library labels bundle that includes that same genre resource. If you want to check that out, I will also have that linked in the show notes. This idea is adapted from Donalyn Miller, which is the author of the book Whisperer, and she tells more about it in her 40 book challenge, which is designed just to get kids reading 40 books in a school year and among different genres like we just talked about. And I would say if you're doing a simple 
reading genres contest. It's just a contest among themselves. That is how Donalyn Miller originally proposed her idea of this book challenge. It's not meant to be a contest among each other. It's not meant to make kids feel bad. And she does talk more about that in her revisited 40 book challenge updates on her website. If I was doing it, I would make sure that I'm asking for students to bring their recording sheet to me, and maybe we're doing a check-in at least once a week so I can have a quick conversation with them about the book they're reading, make sure that they're understanding it, and checking all those comprehension points and making sure that they understand even what genre it is if it's a genre challenge, right? Okay, last but not least, we have Create a Review Game. So creating a review game for the class is one of my favorite alternative book club activities for students to do. And to create a review game, students will choose a current topic the class is studying. Now, this does not have to be limited to reading, but could extend to science, math, or social studies. Depending on my students, I would choose this as an independent or partner activity. Now, I'm not going to really go into depth about this one today, But remember, every Saturday, I'm having a bonus episode, and this is the topic I chose for this coming Saturday. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into how students will create a review game, what it might look like, what kind of things I'm expecting them to include in a review game, and then just maybe give you a few quick options for what type of review game they're going to do, not necessarily what subject, but what product they're going to create from it. Now, assigning book club activities for students can be challenging if our students aren't ready for the independence of running a book club with their peers during small group time. I hope you're going to try one of these five activities we mentioned today. So let's just go do a quick recap. The first one was to design a book cover. Remember, they choose a favorite part or favorite characters, and they're going to redesign the book cover. They might write their own reader's theater, again, based on a book that they just read. They can choose a passion project about something they are interested in, and it does not have to be reading, even if we're doing reading groups. So challenge them to pick a passion that might be in the science world or social studies, and they can do their project on that. Then we have reading genres contests. So you do not have to do 40 books, but you can choose an appropriate number or just have the students set their own personal goal of how many books they want to read or how many different genres they want to try. If they want to try one book from each genre, that could be a really good challenge by itself. You can call it challenge or contest. I used mostly contest within this blog post, but you could also use the word challenge, which is adopted from the 40 book challenge. And then last but not least is to create some kind of review game and then have the class play their review game in honor of them creating it, and the deadline would have to be by the time an upcoming unit test is coming, right? So that they all have time to practice this game and study up for what's gonna be on the test. And I'm gonna have more about review games with my Snapshot Saturday episode, which is gonna be released, of course, on Saturday, called Student Created Games. And I hope you will come back and take a listen to that episode then. In the meantime, thank you so much for being a listener. If you want to have a question answered on the podcast, please make sure you reach out to me. You can do at shared teaching across social media like Lisa did for this episode, or I am linking in the show notes a quick Google form that you can fill out. You can even record your question and send it to me. How fun would that be? And then I can just play it on the podcast and give you my answer. Thanks for much for being a listener. Tune in next time for an all new episode. Bye for now. If you've loved this show, then join me in sharing the teaching. Hitting that subscribe button. And leaving us a review on iTunes. So we can be found by more teachers like you who are ready to start sharing the workload. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Find new episodes each week on sharedteaching.com. Thanks for listening to the Share Teaching Podcast. And research their question then. Sue or their we can
rigor toward them. Her 40 book challenge updated version, which I guess you could say is, um, I'm doing horribly here. 